So, hello everyone. Welcome to Moose Story Time with Adam. Adam has several hello. moose books that he wrote himself. He's a local author, and we're so excited to have him today to share his really cool books. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Adam. Come here. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. I got a bunch Hi. of books. Um, I will start with my wife's favorite, which is the Moose's Ocean Outing. Ooh. Is that the Oregon song? I have one that has that ring deal. One day, the moose walked in the great woods of Maine. His destination was the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. After arriving at the ocean, he met up with his friend, the whale. The moose wanted to play with his friend, but the whale could not get out of the water. Using his brain, the moose put on a scuba outfit. <laughs> <laughs> now the moose was able to go underwater and hang out with the whale. The whale was excited to show the moose what she called home. The whale showed the moose a shipwreck. A coral reef. A school of fish. And our family. As the moose and whales swam around and played, a shark snuck up on them and scared them. Huh. The shark chased the moose and the whale. Mm -hmm. The moose finally asked the shark why he was chasing them. The shark told the moose and whale that he was hungry. <laughs> the moose said that he could make everybody peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Since the shark never had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, he decided to try one. Once ashore, the moose prepared dinner for his friends. The trio enjoyed PB&Js as they watched the sunset over the mountains in Acadia. So that was the moose's ocean outing. Um, let's see. I had more. Here we go. My kids love the moose meets dinosaurs. So I'll do this one next. Can I ask a question? Yes. So did the shark like the peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I think so. Okay. Because the moose I was survived. Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids like the PB and J's too. Oh yeah. One of my favorites. How did I do this? Okay. It was a sunny day when the moose and sandpiper decided to go for a walk in the North Main Woods. Actually, the moose walked and the sandpiper flew. Okay. 
Our two friends had traveled all over the North Main Woods and knew it like the back, back of their hoof and wing. However, they were surprised when they came upon a cave they had never seen before. Their curiosity got the best of them and the two wandered in. Oh no. They walked for a while in the dark cave. <laughs> Until they finally found an opening at the other end. However, the North Main Woods looked a lot different to them. The trees and mountains looked odd, but more importantly, there were dinosaurs roaming everywhere. The moose and sandpiper spotted a stegosaurus. Triceratops. Brontosaurus. My daughter's favorite dinosaur, Edmontonia. Like this one, huh? And a Velociraptor, just to name a few. Okay, like this. Out of the sky, a pterodactyl swooped down and landed next to the moose and sandpiper. The moose asked the pterodactyl if he and the sandpiper could have a ride, and the pterodactyl agreed. <laughs> After flying our two friends around, the pterodactyl dropped the moose and sandpiper off in a small clearing. Suddenly, the ground began to shake beneath everyone's feet and a loud echo roared from the forest. Out of nowhere, a trisaurus rex came charging towards the moose, sandpiper, and pterodactyl. The pterodactyl immediately flew off, waving the moose and sandpiper to fend for themselves. The moose decided to run up a tree and hide there. The plan worked out well until the T-Rex knocked the tree over. <laughs> the moose's next idea was to swim and hide in the middle of the river. That didn't work out too well because the T-Rex's feet were able to reach the riverbed. In a panic, the moose scoped out the landscape and saw a cave, so he decided to run in there and hide. Unfortunately, the T-Rex chased the moose and sandpiper in there. The moose ran through the cave and out the other side, tripped over a rock, tumbled down the mountainside, and landed in the middle of an intersection in downtown Bangor. The T-Rex followed the moose out of the cave, tripped over the same rock, and found itself next to the moose and sandpiper in the middle of an intersection. The tall buildings, fire engine sirens, loud music, and city life frightened the T-Rex so much that it ran back inside the cave, never to be seen again. Downs the moose meets dinosaurs. Um, Jan also likes uh, the moose goes to the post office. Um, I dedicated this one to mailman John our mailman, because he's a really good guy. Um, the channel likes the pictures. The kids seem to like it, so I'll read it to you guys. 
It was late one morning when the moose saw his mailbox overflowing with letters. After getting his mail, the moose noticed there are a lot of overdue bills, but a flashy postcard from Alaska caught his eye. The postcard read, Dear Moose, I'm having so much fun on my Alaskan vacation. I wish you were here. Love, Sandpiper. The moose was excited to hear from his friend and decided to head out to Alaska to visit him. At first, the moose wasn't too sure how to get to Alaska, but suddenly the light bulb went off. The moose thought if he wrote, return to sender on the postcard and climbed in the mailbox with the postcard, then he'd be delivered back to Alaska. The next problem the moose faced was getting into the mailbox. He was too big to fit inside his mailbox. So he tried to squeeze into the big blue mailbox, which didn't work out too well for him because he got stuck. Thankfully, mailman John passed by and helped free the moose. The moose explained his situation to mailman John, who thought he could help the moose out. Moments later, the two were at the post office. Mailman John put the moose on a scale to get his weight. Then Mailman John printed out a postage stamp and placed it on the moose's belly. The moose was put on a conveyor belt for sorting. Before being dumped into a big sorting cart. Moments later, he is being loaded onto a post office truck. The truck drove the moose, mail, and other precious packages to the airport. Lexi? No. From the airport, the moose flew airmail to Alaska. The moose enjoyed his cross-country flight. He's inside the airplane. I'll try to zoom in. Once he arrived safely in Alaska, the moose didn't know where to go, so he rode around in a post office jeep looking for the sandpiper. After searching all day, the moose looked at the postcard again and saw a picture of the northern lights. The moose asked Mailman John to drive him to the Northern Lights, where he eventually found his friend, the Sandpiper, who had a surprise. Yeah, that is...
The sandpiper was admiring the beautiful scenery and eating ice cream sandwiches with his newfound friends, the walrus and polar bear. I'll try to zoom in on them. So that one's the moose goes to the post office. Um, I like the day the moose was a firefighter. Uh, I dedicated this one to my high school buddy, Mike, uh, who is also one of my groomsmen. Um, he chased his dream of becoming a uh, full-time firefighter. Uh, for the longest time, he was a uh, volunteer firefighter. About a couple of years ago, he passed the academy and got hired. Uh, so this one's for Mike. Uh, this one's the older one. I've, it's since been updated, the, the words and stuff. Um, like with the colors, when it says blue, the words are blue. When it says green, the word green's green. Um, but we can still check out the pictures. It's still a good story. Did you wanna wander in, bud? Boo. Boo. You wanna wander in? Say hello Say to hi. everybody. Can you read the book with daddy? One morning, the moose decided to go for a stroll. During his walk, a red fire engine roared past him. He then saw the fire station. Since the doors were wide open, his curiosity let him in. Because nobody else is talking. You can talk if you want. This is Parker, by the way. The moose was greeted by a firefighter who offered to give the moose a tour. The moose enjoyed sliding down the pole. He even tried out the fire extinguisher. Moose was outfitted with a fireman's coat and helmet. He thought he looked dashing. Suddenly, a call came to the fire station. <laughs> Amid the frenzy, the moose was swept up in the action and ended up riding on the back of a fire engine. <laughs> The moose helped save a cat from a tree. Learn how to operate a fire hydrant. And climbed a tall ladder. Firefighter Mike said that this was the scariest part of firefighting school is climbing the tall ladder. He was all scared and nervous he was going to fall, which I don't blame him. Man the hose as he helped put out a structure fire. And steered the back of the tiller truck. Afterwards, he went to a party and saw all different colors of fire engines from yellow. White. Black. Blue, green with Parker inside of it, 
I don't know if you can see him. Parker gets upset with me because I put him in the green truck, even though blue is his favorite color. And I try to tell him that uh, there is more room in the green truck than the blue truck. So he tells me next time I redo the book, I have to put him in the blue truck. Uh, orange. Pink with Annabelle. Here's Annabelle. Purple. And mommy's favorite color, lime green. Though the moose like the traditional red the best. By the end of the day, the moose was exhausted and went to sleep on a stretcher in an ambulance. So that one's the day the moose was a firefighter. Um, let's see. My friends at work really like the day the moose went to school. A uh, little background story behind this. I was bored at work a couple months ago and I asked my friend Bismarck for, uh, for an idea. And he said, how about you write one about the moose going to school? I said, that sounds like a great idea. So as opposed to actually doing real work, I wrote this in about 20 minutes and then resumed my normal job. Hope nobody at work's listening. Otherwise I might get in trouble. So I dedicated this one to Bismarck. On a sunny fall morning, the moose saw a school bus scoot past him. Since he had nothing better to do that day, he decided he would go to school. So we got the moose, uh, Mr. Bismarck, Annabelle, and Parker, and the sandpipers there too. After boarding the school bus, the moose didn't know where to sit. All the kids told him the best seat was in the back of the school bus because it would bounce them all over the place. Once at school, the moose had no idea where to go, so he went in the first classroom that he saw. School started off with history class, which the moose found interesting. Then the moose was off to music class. The moose loved playing the various musical instruments. Next, the class was taught geography. The moose liked learning about different places and looking at maps. Eventually, the students moved down the hall to science. The moose enjoyed blowing stuff up in science class. Following science class, the moose went to the art studio. Since uh, the kids were finger painting, since the moose didn't have fingers, he painted with his hooves. Before he knew it, it was lunchtime. The moose had fun eating with his classmates because a food fight broke out. After lunch was recess, the moose enjoyed playing on the swings and the monkey bars.
Once the fun was over, it was back to school and the Muth was off to reading class. Which was followed by writing class. I had a little help with this picture. Uh, Parker drew it, and then he also drew the moose. That's his interpretation of the moose. And arithmetic. The moose did not like math class because the numbers were too confusing. Suddenly, a bell rang and the entire school evacuated the building for a fire drill. Because well, everyone's listening. The artist has joined us again. When the fire drill was over, the students and Moose went back into the school. That's when the Moose stumbled into a foreign language class, but it was Greek to him. The moose wandered the halls and walked into a classroom where show and tell was happening. Because the moose didn't have a toy to talk about, he told the kids about his big antlers. Are the speakers are on? They can hear you talking. No, ours. Oh, they are on. The last class of the day was gym, where everybody played dodgeball. Oh, nobody else is talking yet. I don't want to talk. You can talk. They can hear you. I don't want to hear them. By the end of the school day, the moose was exhausted. He hopped back on the wrong school bus and fell asleep. Hey there, bud. Trying to pick the next story. Sometime later, the moose. I want you want the dinosaur? We just did the dinosaur one. Sometime later, the moose woke up in an empty school bus at the bus garage. The moose quickly found the bus driver who called the moose's mom to pick him up. He's <laughs> scared. Hold on till she comes back. The story is uh, loosely based on me. In first grade and kindergarten, I always hopped on the wrong school bus, got a huge tour of Grand Island. Uh, my older sister would come home and mom would ask, hey, where's Adam? And Sarah would say, I don't know. What do you mean, where's Adam? And mom would say, you were on the school bus with them, weren't you? Well, yeah, but I don't know where he is. Um, and I didn't like math class either. It was too confusing the numbers. Um, which one do you want to do, bud? The monster truck one or the bedtime one? Uh, you can play a game later. We'll do, we'll do the moose's bedtime routine. Shannon asked me to do this one uh, about a year or two ago because Parker and Annabelle were having trouble going to sleep. So I wrote the story, they love the story, but they don't listen to the message at all, which is why bedtime lasts for like two hours sometimes. Each night after dinner, the moose gets ready for bed. And yes, he has junk food for, for dinner. He has pizza and ice cream. To wind down, he will play ball. or with his cars. If he is stinky, which is most nights, he'll take a shower. But he prefers to take a bath because he can play with his toys.
Once he is squeaky clean, he will brush his teeth. To get ready for bed, the moose will avoid a late night snack like candy because it will make him hyper. Why does he want to be hyper? Well, he doesn't want to be hyper. He wants to be mellow for bed. And it makes him he says no to TV because it'll keep him awake. The moose will pass on a hot cup of coffee, even if it is decaf. And yes, for some weird reason, my kids taste my coffee and they think it tastes delicious. I didn't like coffee until probably college. He will even refuse water or juice because he doesn't want to be up all night going to the bathroom. Speaking about the bathroom, the moose will make one last pit stop before bed. And yes, he will wash his little hooves after his business. Once he is ready for bed, the moose will go upstairs to his room and grab a few books to read. Before getting settled in for the night, the moose will turn on a nightlight. He thinks it'll help keep the ghost, boogeyman, and shark away. Then the moose will close his eyes and drift off to sleep. He may have a pleasant dream about dancing sugar plums. Or flying. Uh, Annabelle's in this one up there. Parker's down there. Let me zoom in a little bit. or even driving a monster truck. He could even have visions about being a pirate. Being chased. or falling. Don't worry, he's falling onto a trampoline. By the next morning, the moose was fully recharged and ready to seize the day. Hmm, let's see. Annabelle likes the moose's Halloween. Even though it's not Halloween season, it's almost Easter. Uh, we'll still do it because she likes it. And yes, this one's loosely based on me as well. Do not eat all of your Halloween candy at one go. It will make you sick and crazy. A lesson that I've had to learn several times. It was Halloween time again in Maine. This year, the moose wanted to join in the Halloween festivities. The moose left the forest and made his way into Bar Harbor. He soon found a howling party at the center of town. There, the moose tried bobbing for apples. Won a pumpkin pie eating contest. There's Parker again. 
he's upset he did not win the contest. He wanted to beat the moose. But when I revi when I revise the story after they get that Parker wins. And won the best Halloween costume award. After the party, the moose joined a band of kids and went trick or treating. And there's Annabelle, front and center, ready to get candy. The moose never went trick or treating before, so he did not have a bag. He just held his candy in his arms. At a few houses, some adults the, accused the moose of being too old for trick or treating. The moose had collected so much candy that he couldn't carry anymore. The kids always ask me what kind of candy the moose is carrying. So he's got a, uh, for some reason, he's got a candy cane, um, some candy corn, lollipops, gumdrops, candy bars, cotton candy, I think. Since he never had candy before, the moose decided to eat it, and all of it he ate. I think that's a Reese cup he's popping down. At first, the moose had a stomach ache. But moments later, he was on a sugar high. The moose, beginning, the moose began running all throughout town and even knocked over Halloween decorations, including pumpkins. The moose eventually made his way to a cemetery. While there, he was so loud and crazy that he woke the dead. Soon the moose was being chased by a ghost. The moose decided to hide in an old abandoned house, but the ghost chased him in there. Still being chased by the ghost, the moose ran into the spooky woods. And like in every great horror movie, he trips while being chased. The ghost got tangled up in the branches of the trees. Overwhelmed, the moose decided to call it a night. Wait, hang on. Overwhelmed, the moose decided to call it a night and race back home where he hid underneath the security of his own blankets. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I get scared, I try to hide underneath the blankets too. I'll tell you what you actually say. I'll tell you what you actually say. He hides under blankets to scare us. <laughs> oh, me? Yes. Yeah. I, hide, I hide under the blankets to scare you guys. Yeah, but that scares. But someday, <laughs> we're going to scare your butt off. Okay, I, I wait for the day. The next day, the moose was happy that Halloween was over. I guess breathing a little sigh of relief. Um, any suggestions for the next book, bud? 
You want to do the monster truck one? Yes, no, maybe. No. Uh, what about, <clears throat> what do you think about the kids might have some questions about all those stories? Because I think we've had about six of them now. Um, yeah. Does anybody, I'll unmute people here. If anybody has a question, they might. Oh, I got that one. Sorry, so it doesn't, you might have to unmute yourselves <laughs> if you want to ask a question. It doesn't want to let me. No, does anybody have a question? No. Oh, here's a question. My cousin Jess. Hey. Ben wants to know what the moose's favorite candy is. Hmm. I don't know. I like Reese cups, so probably Reese cups. What's your tables? favorite candy, Ben? <laughs> Ben's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Does the moose jump through tables? Uh, maybe. <laughs> He's not gone to a tailgate party yet. You say Bill's Mafia? <laughs> no. That's because we're Steeler Nation. <laughs> you like the book spend? Do you want to say thank you for reading to me? Okay. <laughs> Hi, cousin Van. Thank you for showing up. Make weird noises like that. Yeah, thank you to everyone for coming today. How many moose books are there? Uh, oh. Um, I 14 right now. I'm currently working on the 15th, and I have about eight or ten more written. Um, each book takes me about anywhere from a month to three months to illustrate, depending on how much free time I have or uh, how detailed the pictures are. And is there another major character other than the moose? He's got the sandpiper as a sidekick. Um, who doesn't really talk? Um, I did write a story about the sandpiper uh, going on a winter vacation, uh, but I haven't gotten around to illustrating that one yet. That sounds like fun. How did you um, decide to pick a sandpiper for his friend? Um, I looked up character or uh, animals that live in Maine, and I didn't want to do lobster because that's too stereotypical. Yeah. Um, and I came across birds, um, and I like the sandpiper. It seemed like a cool, cute little uh, bird. Yeah. I really liked the the dinosaur book, the one with the dinosaurs. That was pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> The kids love it. Uh, yeah. They're into this series called Dino Dana. Uh, so between that and the moose book, uh, they want to dig up dinosaurs. So they already have half the front yard and backyard dug up. Uh, they're not good about filling in the holes. So mm -hmm. today, one of the kids tripped over a hole they dug like two weeks ago. Uh-oh. It was like a Stooges routine. <laughs> what other books did people like today? What book did Ollie like? Uh, the dinosaur the one? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What what book did he like? The caterpillar one. The caterpillar? What are you talking about? Oh, I think there was a little girl doing um, Eric Crow's Hungry Caterpillar in one corner. <laughs> he must have been watching that, too. <laughs> he does like that book. Yeah, so does she, apparently. <laughs> but they were also listening to Adam. <laughs> he doesn't like it, Adam. I like the mouse went, or the moose went to school. Yeah, that was good, too. Thank you. Yeah. 
Well, thank you everyone for tuning in today. And uh, you can find many, not every single one, but many of the Moose books at the library. Once we're open again, you can borrow Moose books. <laughs> Until that time, you can, you can um, go to the library's website and you'll be able to listen to this recording again. So if you need a moose fix, go to the recordings. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Stacy. Thank uh, you, have Adam. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Cousin Dan and Jess and Amber. Good job, Adam. Everyone, uh, everyone else I forgot. Thank you. Bye-bye.